All right, so we get started on this problem. The first thing we need to do, um, we want to write an equation for the slope and displacement. So the, the way we've talked about up to this point using direct integration, we have to find an equation for the, the moment. So let's imagine then writing the moment equation. We use method of sections. Let's say I cut the structure right here. Um, which side is going to be easier for us to work with, the left side or the right side? I think the, the right side. I'm sorry, the left side. I'm about to say right. Um, the right side is trapezoidal. That would be a little more challenge. You'd probably break that down into two forces, one with the rectangle, one with the triangle. And then you'd be dealing with links that are going to be, since this distance is x, these would be l minus x. Be, the algebra would be a little more uh, clumsy. So let's work on the left side. So if I work on the left side, I'm going to need the reaction at A. So the first thing I want to do is find my reaction at A. So to do that, I'll calculate my concentrated equivalent force of the entire load, put it at its centroid, and then balance that with the force at A. So the area under my load curve is what? It's a triangle, so that's one half base, which is L, times height, which is uh, W. So that looks like that's going to be WL over 2. And what's the distance from B to that centroid? It's third the distance, and it's what? Length is L, so that should be L over 3. Everybody see that? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is solve for my reaction at A. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how I want to organize this. I guess I'll do it over here. So I'll sum moments about B and make sure I'm in equilibrium. So summing moments about B, I should be able to find AY. So looking at my moments about B with right-hand rule as my sign convention, what kind of moment does this WL over 2 force create, positive or negative? positive. So the force is WL over 2. And what's the moment arm? L over 3. And then this reaction here at A, the way I've assumed it acting up, will create what kind of moment about B, positive or negative? Negative. <coughs> it has a moment arm of L. Oh, sorry, thank you. That's kind of an A, isn't it? Looks more like an H now, laying over a B. That's close enough. So AY is going to be equal to WL over 6. That's all I need from that. So now let's come down here and draw a free body diagram of that section. I'm going to put on my value that I'm looking for, AY, which now is WL over 6. And at some distance X, I've got a cut. And at that cut, I'm really all I'm really looking for is my bending moment. Now, what's the load there? It's still a triangular shape. But what's the intensity of the load right there for any value x? Well, I just need to write the load as a function. Okay, so what's the slope of this line? Rise, which is w over run, which is l, which is just w over l. And you multiply that by x. So this is going to be w x divided by l. Now, does that work? Well, when x is 0, what does this predict my intensity should be? 0, and that, that's true. And when x is L, what should the intensity be? W, and that's also true. So it seems to work. So now when I calculate my concentrated equivalent load, I'll just call it F1, what's that force going to be? Well, it's still a triangle, so it's going to be 1 half the base, which is x, times the height, which is wx over l. 
<laughs> so that ends up being WX squared over 2L. Can we check that to make sure that's right? What should F1 be when X is equal to L? Should be this, right? So I put in X equal to L and what do I get? WL over 2, so it matches. So it looks like everything's moving in the right direction. Do you guys see that? So what's the distance now from the cut to our centroid? This is from the big end of the triangle. It's going to be one-third the distance. So that's going to be X over 3. So now on this free body, if I sum the moments at the cut, what do I get? Well, starting at the cut, I have the moment, and using right-hand rule for my statics, this positive bending moment is also a positive <coughs> moment. Uh, my force F1 also creates positive moment. So that would be a force of WX squared over 2L times a distance of x over 3. And then what's left? The reaction force, which is a negative moment. The force is w over, I'm sorry, wl over 6, and the distance is x. So I now can have a moment, which is a function of x, Solving for that, just throw everything to the other side of the equation. I can tidy some of this stuff up here. So I got WX cubed over 6L plus WXL over 6. Those those have the same unit. So there's my moment expression. Is there a couple places I can check this? Where do I know the moment in the structure? Yeah, A and B. So what's the moment at A? It should be zero. So the moment when x equals zero should be zero. Does my equation give me that? Yeah, zero, zero, you get zero, so that seems to work. And also I think that the moment at x equal L should also be zero. I think if you look at it, you'll see that that's also true. So everything seems to be working so far. Any questions about that? That's kind of a lot of work. This would have been this would have been a place to stop on the first exam, right? What's the moment equation? Well, now we're about a third of the way through the problem, maybe less. So that's a good thing about this class. It always it builds on skills that you already have used and developed, and it continues to reinforce those skills. So. I guess you could look at it as a bad thing, too. If you didn't get them the first time, you're still struggling with them, then you have to continue to struggle. But I think that as you do more and more, that uh, hopefully you'll, the light will go off. You'll have that eureka moment, and everything will be okay. You don't feel that way? I'm sensing resistance to this whole philosophy of, of light going off. You don't want the light to go off? I like it, too. You'd like it to. And that's that's important. Desire is important. I'm still waiting for it to go off on something like parenting, uh, being a husband, all these things. I'm struggling with these things constantly. Maybe you are too with other things in your life. And, uh, I think I'll get total consciousness on my deathbed, <laughs> just like Bill Murray and Caddyshack. You know, gunga galunga galunga. All right. All right. So what do we do now? I have my moment equation. What do we do? Does anybody know? Bueller? Bueller? Huh? Miss Munoz, you were saying something. What were you going to say? Derive it. Derive what? The moment equation. We have the moment equation. What do we do with it? We integrate it. So remember the first integral, if I, I want to know the slope, it's the <coughs> integral of m over ei. So let's do that. Um, so 
So I'm going to pull my W out and this 6 out. So I'm going to end up with W over 6EI as a constant. And then inside the integral, I'll be left with all that other stuff, which will be uh, X cubed over L, that's a negative, plus XL. We'll put a bracket around that. So if I integrate that, I should get, again, my constant W over 6EI. And then the integral of this should be x to the fourth over 4L plus x squared L over 2, All right? And then our first integration constant, I'll call it C1. We, we talked about this previously, do I know anything about theta? And the answer is it's going to be hard to know that ahead of time. We know that at the supports, theta is non-zero. We don't know what it's going to be. Somewhere out here in the middle, there's going to be a slope equal to zero at the maximum displacement, but we don't know where that point is right now. So we just have to leave this constant alone. We don't know anything to force our equation for slope to match. We just have to leave it. So our next uh, integration is to integrate the slope to get the displacement. So I'll integrate all that. Again, we have that same constant that I've been carrying around, W over 6EI. And now I'll integrate this guy. So this will be x to the fifth over 20L plus x cubed times L over 6. And then the constant C1 gets integrated, so that's C1x, and then we generate a second integration constant, I'll call it C2. So we have two constants in our equation for displacement, but we have two conditions of displacement that we can match. We know the displacement at x equals 0 is 0, and the displacement at x equals L is 0. I think the easiest one to do first would be... Um, At x equals 0, we know the displacement is 0. That's our, con our con a condition. So when you plug in x equals 0, what are you left with? C2. That tells you that C2 has to be 0. Well, that's nice. Next will be a little more challenging. Um, not much. We know that at x equals L, that's point B, the displacement is also zero. So now I have to take the remaining equation, the terms that still remain, and evaluate them at x equal L. So when I do that, I still have my constant out here. And now in this term, you plug in x equal L, it looks like you get minus L to the fourth over 20 plus L to the fourth over six, plus C1 L. So now I just need to solve for C1 to make all that go away. Um, I'm looking at a lowest common denominator of this fraction. The one that pops to my mind first is uh, 60. So when I do that, um, this term becomes 3L to the 4th over 60. This term becomes 10L to the 4th over 60. And this one's negative. You guys see that? So it looks like C1 is going to be negative. Um... The 60 comes out here, you get 360 EI in the denominator. In the numerator, you get L cubed, and you get 10 minus 3, you get 7. Did I do that right? That look, that look okay? 
I don't remember the answer to this problem, so I, I don't know if this is uh, correct or not. So give me a quick quick check on that. I think it looks reasonable. <coughs> Okay. So at this point, uh, we have equations for slope and displacement. We know a value for C2, we know a value for C1. So you can go back up here to the equation for the slope, plug in C1, now you have an equation for the slope. Now remember, um, I lost it. Thank you. So there should be a, a W there. Thank you. So if you go back and look at your slope equation, it looks like a fourth order equation. Uh, C1 is a constant. So if you want to find where that is equal to zero, you're going to have to solve a fourth order equation. I don't know about you, but I can't do that off the top of my head. However, You'll notice that it's x to the fourth x squared. So you can do a little change of variable here and turn that into a quadratic equation into a new variable, say z, where z is equal to x squared. And then you can solve that relatively reasonably with the quadratic equation and find out what value of x, or in this case z, and then x would tell you where the slope is zero. And of course, where the slope is zero, you plug that value of x into here and you'll find the maximum displacement. So, so substitute z squared, or z for x squared, is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. So really what you want to find is where the slope is equal to zero, right? Because that implies that's where our displacement will be max. I think it's beyond this discussion to do that, but if you wanted to solve this problem, you would just have to find values of x that make this term go to zero. And what I was going to suggest is that this equation could be rewritten, um, say, with z equal to x squared. And when you plug that back in there, suddenly this becomes z squared plus z, and that's quadratic. So you probably all remember the quadratic equation, so you could solve for the roots in z space. Just remember that z has to be between 0 and 1. You might get a root outside that. It might be negative. It might be greater than 1. So that root won't count. So when you take the root that's realistic, once you solve for z, then you would take the square root of z to get the value of x. That's one way to find it. And of course, with the square root, you get plus minus Again, you want, don't want the negative value, you want the positive value. I'm not sure where that number would be right now. I guess I could solve this problem. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I'll, I'll stop the video here, but on the written part that I post on the web later, I'll go ahead and solve the problem and let you see it. But I think in terms of the exam, I would never expect you to be able to do all that in, in the window of opportunity. If you have the two equations, I think you, you accomplish what I want you to do. So any other questions about that? All right. <clears throat>